How you doing? I'm uh, Mr. Watkins. I'm going to be showing you some information today that's going to be critical to you in the, the industry. One thing that you will be doing a lot of will be setting valves on a diesel engine. There are some sort of critical things that go along with that. And first things first, safety. Put your safety glasses on. Remove your rings. Well, easier said than done many times. And, and watch it. You don't want anything to get caught up. So remember, safety is no accident. <coughs> so the first thing, we have a Max AI 400, and we have to set the valves on this engine. So the one thing that is actually critical to this is that you set the timing uh, so that you can do the adjustment properly. Now the first thing I need to do is remove the valve covers. Now I've already, to save time, I've already removed the bolts. Now part of what I want to show you is actually on this. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Yeah. Alright. You'll notice on here that it gives you a valve adjustment. You have a hot adjustment and a cold adjustment, but all Mac engines give you a cold temperature adjustment. So this one would be 16 for the intake, uh, 24 thousandths for the exhaust valves, and then I'll go through the procedure and show you how to do those. <coughs> Next, what we're going to need need to show you some of the tools that you're going to need to accomplish the valve adjustment. Alright, you will need a 36 millimeter and uh, millimeter socket and that is to turn the engine over so that you can set the pistons in the correct position. You'll need your 16 and 24 thousandths feeler gauge, a zip gun, a millimeter set of allen wrenches, a torque wrench, extension and 13 millimeter socket, and ratchet and a 15 millimeter wrench. So the next thing that you would have to do, now I have, have this one is preset, but you would put your 36 millimeter on here and you would actually rotate this around to where you can see the uh, timing marks on the engine. You notice we have a pointer here and we have a mark on our vibration dampener which gives us the correct engine position. Some of the things that you're going to need to, to know is which valves are which. If you look on the inside of the cylinder head itself, on the top, they will be marked E and I. Uh, the I's are generally on this side of the engine, of the cylinder head, and then you have the exhaust, which is on this side. Easiest way to tell on the Mac AI 400 is that the, you have a spring that is located on the push rod. That we this we this stuff information we covered during the initial class of engine components. <coughs> the rocker arm, the adjusting screw, the locking jam nut. Now each rocker arm for each cylinder has these. All right. Uh, remember the important part to remember is that the exhaust valve has the spring on the push rod, and what this does is to make sure that you scavenger all exhaust out of your cylinder prior to filling it up with fresh air to start its cycle over again. <clears throat> now, the thing to remember is when we do these adjustments, uh, again, if you can look down here real quick, we double check, make sure our timing mark is correct, all right? Then we come up, back up here, and we'll, we can actually rotate the push rods. All right. Well, once we do that, what that tells us is that our valves are completely closed and they can be ad ad adjusted from that position. Now there's a little rhyme that goes along with this because we know in our, in our firing order that we have cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four, cylinder five, cylinder six. But the firing order is one, five, three, six, two, four. All right. Now the, the thing that's important about that is if you're doing a valve adjustment by yourself, you every time that you set a set of valves, you can set it by the firing order, but you have to rotate the engine 120 degrees when you change each cylinder. <clears throat> now sometimes, and they're marked 
in, in increments one and six, two and five, three and four. You made it down now. <laughs> All right, so now, if you remember the rhyme, now this is the important part. Do the first two valves, then you will do one valve per cylinder all the way through the engine. This, and you don't have to get down off the engine to rotate it. All right, so we will do intake and exhaust. <clears throat> intake will be on cylinder two, exhaust will be on cylinder three, all right? Then we go intake again on cylinder four, exhaust on cylinder five. Now you notice that I can actually turn all of these push rods that I told you before, right? They all spin. That means that valve is closed and is in an adjustable position. <clears throat> so once we go through and we set the valves, then we get down to the other end, and I'll, I'll show you that. And first, I want to show you how to actually set a uh, valve clearance on, on the engine. Do is go through and loosen all the jam nuts on all the rockers. I've already done this. <coughs> Make sure that they're, they're all loose, because you don't want to turn an adjuster inside of your jam nut. All right? Now, if you can see the feeler gauge, you'll see that we're set on 16 and 24 Thousands. These are the only two feeler blades that we will be using. Since the uh, exhaust valve over here will be set at 24 thousandths. And the reason that the adjustment is larger here is because of heat expansion through the valves. The exhaust gathers up more heat than the intake side does. We'll go through and we'll We'll do our exhaust valve first. Now you'll notice that there are bridges in here that are, that are loose. These bridges operate two valves simultaneously. But so we're doing the uh, exhaust valve, which is 24 thousandths. Now on this particular engine, you might want to come around to this side. You'll notice that this spring here, all right, on, on the push rod has got to be pushed all the way down. And then you check your adjustment. If you fail to do that, then your adjustment will be off, okay? So that's kind of loose. We'll take our five millimeter and we'll push down and adjust at the same time. Now you want to do these right to where there will be just a little bit of a drag. And at that time, you will tighten up your nut, still holding your adjusting screw. And you can give this a little, little tightening. Recheck your adjustment. And you still have a slight drag there, so that's, that's really good. All right. Then you'll go to the intake valve. <coughs> I don't have enough hands here. Okay. So we will get this one you don't have to push down on. So if it was, say it was really loose like that and then as I would turn it you see that the the gauge itself moves so once it moves up and it and it stays steady that's you're generally pretty close so give it a little and you have to be very gentle okay so then we got that one and we'll give it a little bit of a tightening there Go back, double check it. We have a nice little little drag there. So now that's that takes care of cylinder one, number one on top dead center, and that is on its compression stroke. So we don't have to worry about what strokes they're on from here on out until we get to the other end. <coughs> now we'll go to cylinder two. Remember it's intake exhaust, intake exhaust. Okay? And as long as you can remember that, you will should have never have any problems. So we find our 16, we stick that bad boy right under there, and you see our gauge move just, till it, just until you feel it tighten up on the Allen wrench, and that generally will put you right just about on the, a perfect spot. Then turn down your jam nut, hold it, snug it down just a little bit, recheck it, and it moved a little bit so we have to go back. Yeah. So intake, check it. Ah, very good. 
Then we do our exhaust with our 24 thousandths, and that feels pretty tight. So we're jamming it loose. Ah, so remember, I told you you had to push down on it, and you see how big the gap is. So we put our Allen wrench in, push down and turn at the same time. Get a little bit of drag, hold the adjusting screw, and tighten down the jam nut. Recheck. Good to go. Now, that takes care of cylinder one, cylinder two intake, and cylinder three exhaust. Now the next one, remember what I said before, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. We'll go to cylinder four, and we'll do the same thing. <coughs> so we'll do intake here. Stick that bad boy right down in there, jam that's loose. This is the one that has the, the tight. Oops, a little bit too much there. There we go. Right, nice little bit of drag. Tighten down a jam nut. Snug it down. Recheck. Good to go. Now we'll go to the exhaust valve. Well, we got lots of room here, huh? <laughs> Okay, so we do the same thing. Use our 24 thousandths. Yeah, I had the right one. Stick it down in there. Remember to push to push down on it. So we know we have to we might have to loosen that one up just a little bit. And I'll turn it down to where it first snugs so I don't have to push so far. Now you've seen the, the gauge come up and it gets a little tight up here on your adjuster. A little bit too tight. Back it off just a little bit. Ah, perfect. Then we tighten down our jam nut. Hold our adjusting screw. Give it a little snug up. Now, at this time, since that's cylinder five. Now, at this time, we will start and we'll have to re-rotate the engine 360 degrees. Put it on the engine. Let me get around here on this side. Get around there. Now we're going to come all the way around 360 degrees and we're going to come right back to our timing mark. Remember, folks, these are diesel engines, and they don't turn that easy. A lot of compression on these engines. They run about 22 to 1 compression ratios. All right, so now we're back <coughs> on our timing mark again. Now we'll go to the back of the engine, and we'll check our push rods. You'll notice that they both turn freely. So now this cylinder is on top dead center. All right, same little rhyme. Intake, exhaust, intake, and exhaust. Again, make sure our jam nuts are loose, except for the ones that we adjusted. And it's one way you can tell which ones you did. Your jam nut should be too, should be too ha, tight. All right, so we'll come back and do our 16. Stick it under there. Just kind of snug it up a little bit. We'll check it. Give it just a little bit more. Tighten down our jam nut. Give it a little bit of snug. Then we'll go over to our exhaust valve. Okay, that one's a little bit too tight. 
Remember to push down on it. That's the important part. Remember this push rod has that exhaust spring on it. Alright, okay, a little bit of a little bit of drag. Tighten down our jam nut. Give it a little bit of torque. Here we go. Now, <coughs> what did I say the next one was? We're gonna go intake and exhaust. Let me just double check and make sure I got the right one. I don't want to miss send my valves. Set that one. Give her a little bit of snug. Recheck. Awesome. Alright, then we're going to go to intake on number three. Because our jam nut's still loose, so we know we haven't adjusted that one yet. to exhaust on number two. Let me get that bleed out of the way. We've got a ways to go with that one, huh? Get a little bit of drag on there. That's good. Hold our adjusting screw. Give it a little tug, and that completes your valve adjustment. You've just adjusted every valve in the engine. <coughs> like I said, in, uh, in the industry, if you're out working on truck stops, you'll get these engines that will come in. So you need to make sure that you have the right uh, measurements for the right temperature of your engine. If your engine is up to operating temperature, your adjustments, so according to manufacturer specifications, will be different. But that's how you set set those remember your safety equipment be safe be a technician